Oh, this is a pretty rare one. Out of the package, and I actually already know what this is. This is a Cotton Cordell Shadow. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Hopefully everybody out there in Bassin Bud land is having a great Saturday. Uh, we are coming to you live from the Retro Bassin studio today. I have had the old Retro Wagon on the water a few days this week, but let me tell you, looking at the Texas forecast, it is definitely, uh, as Alan Jackson would say, hotter than a hoochie coochie, whatever that is. If I can stay on the water long enough to peg a few nice fish on some old school lures, we'll definitely have some on the water episodes heading your way real soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to clear out a little bit of my retro mail backlog that I've been sitting on. I've got a few packages from some very special bass and buds that I have been meaning to open. And today is going to be the day to crack open a little retro mail. All right, first package comes to us from my bass and bud, Mark Ng, who runs a really cool Facebook page called The Big O Connection. He and I have been linking up on Facebook a pretty good bit these days. Hopefully gonna do some collaboration in the near future, either virtually or hopefully in person at an upcoming NFL CC show. Mark sent me uh, some different I'm assuming Cotton Cordell type things here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he sent, so I was gonna wait till we had the old camera rolling to show y'all. <laughs> what do we have here? Ah, uh, there's some very interesting old school baits in here. Let's take a look at this. And first off, before I start trying to talk about these baits that I probably don't know nearly enough about, we'll see if there's a note in there. And if there is, I'll start with a note for once. <laughs> there is a note. <laughs> And it's like numbered with allure, so yeah, that would have been a huge miss. All right, we've got a uh, little note here. It says, Chris, here are some baits to fish, old school. Good, because hopefully they'll be on the water tomorrow morning. Happy fishing from your friend at the Big O Connection. Uh, list is on the back. All right. First off, number one, it says Big O uh, Anniversary Box Lure. Let's check this thing out. Ha ha, yes. That is a Cotton Cordell Fred C. Young Big O Anniversary Lure. I think this was brought out by, yep, the old BASS 25th Anniversary. And it looks like celebrating 25 years, 1967 to 1992. This is a really cool commemorative lure that you can actually pick up on eBay for not too, too much. I do have one of these out of the box. I'm excited to get one in the box as well. And what this is, is a plastic recreation of Fred C. Young's original Big O. The first time I looked at this, I actually had not seen a real Big O in person. And it wasn't until I got in front of Michael Bacon's most epic collection of Big O's that I got to appreciate how close to the original this bait is, even though it's plastic. So I'll show you both sides of this bait. There is the plastic version of the Big O. And yeah, this is definitely one that I could fish. This color scheme is very reminiscent of the Fred C. Young original baits. First off, it's got a very nice two-tone 
or three-tone color gradient, as well as those large uh, gold flecks that are definitely reminiscent of the early Fred C. Young Big O's. Fred did a couple of things with his baits so that you knew they were his. First off, his lips were some sort of computer board. This is just a straight molded plastic. And the way that he would do the gills, it was almost like a sideways check mark. And of course, on the other side, he would sign pretty much every bait and number them on the bottom. And of course, if you've seen that Big O walkthrough at Michael Bacon's, he has the number two ever Big O. This one says 1967, obviously in commemoration of the year. And that is a nice looking bait. Another neat thing about this, and the reason this actually might be a pretty good fisher, is listen to this rattle. It's got a pretty good thump, doesn't it? Well, thank you, Mark. All right, let's look at number two. Number two says a hothead deep diver big O. Huh. Hothead deep diver big O. Ooh, I think I spot that one. Oh, that's a nice looking bait. That is the old deep big O. And what was so interesting about this, and I'll have to ask Mark about it, but Cotton Cordell had I feel like five or six different variations of pretty much the same bait. This is the biggest bodied of the ones that I've seen. It's got a nice hefty lip on it. Looks like in a parrot color of some sort. And that'll totally go in the old Umco crankbait tackle box. Number three, it says plum purple in 7,800. Ooh, ooh, this is a cool one, and this is totally gonna be a Fisher. Another nice Cotton Cordell version of the Big O. It's really solid. I would say one of the more solid Big O's that I've seen. And this is a nice intermediate size. It's not the big original, and it's not the small modern Big O. But that is a really cool looking bait in a really nice purple. It's got some dark shading on the top, a little silver belly, and yeah, that's a nice little cranker, isn't it? Number four, limited blue crawl. Huh. Oh! <laughs> I've been on a little bit of a tear on the Lornet paint shop as of late. I feel like just about every two weeks they come out with some really cool custom version of a classic bait, be it a pop R or a devil's horse or a big O. This is a bait that I saw and it sold out before I got one and I was lamenting to Mark about that. So he was kind enough to send me one. I gotta be honest with you, Mark. I thought this was the bigger version of the Big O. I had no idea it was the UL version. A nice color, and I'm gonna have to think long and hard if that's gonna be a caster or a collector, since I only have one. Number five are two Rippling Water Cranks by Mike Cordell. Okay. Very cool. I'll show you the big one first. It says Rippling Water. P.O. Box 20620 Hot Springs, Arkansas. And that is a much more standard looking uh, crankbait. And yeah, if you didn't know that wasn't a big O, you would think that's a big O. And there's the back of the package. What does it say here? Congratulations, you have purchased the highest quality, finest running, uh, best performing lures on the market today. Or not on the market today. Lures by Ripping Water Corporation are made with premium hooks and stainless steel hardware. Last but not least, each lure in the Rippling Water Outdoors is completely crafted, painted, assembled, and finished with 100% American labor. All this combined makes the Rippling Water Outdoor Lures the best value on the market today. Nice little bait. That might stay in the box though, I don't know. 
And here's another Ripplin' Water Lore from Mike Cordell. That one I would say looks like a big O, but look how curved that tail is. That is actually a rather unique shape. I'm gonna have to ask Mark about that, or maybe he can drop a comment here in the video talking a little bit about that unique design, because that is definitely not just a big O copy. That is a like totally different looking bait. I like the package though. I like that water, that's cool. Moving on down to number six. It is a bait I believe Mike Cordell produced under a Lighthouse brand. Still researching this. Oh, and it's a musky top water. So. <laughs> it says Northern Lights. And that totally looks like a musky top water, but uh, that could catch a bass. No doubt. Nice old school saltwater red and white pattern. I'm imagining that is a wooden bait. It definitely looks like a wooden bait if you look at the surface or the indentations on it. And there's the back of the package from Northern Lights. Huh. And it does say Hot Springs, Arkansas, so that might be why Mark is suspicious that this could be a Mike Cordell bait as well. Sweet. Oh, and lastly, <laughs> this is a pretty rare one. Out of the package, and I actually already know what this is. This is a Cotton Cordell Shadow. It is their answer, I guess, sort of to the Storm Thin Fin. Uh, Rebels got one as well. I forget the name right now. But it's very shad shaped, but a big O. Notice how much thinner it is from a standard big O. I would say that's not necessarily flat sided, but it's pretty darn close and definitely has that nice shad belly profile to it. <laughs> oh man, that's a pretty cool color as well. Almost looks like a sea trout. And yeah, buddy, that's totally one that I will be throwing probably later this summer and definitely into the fall. Woo. Well, thanks again for the big O mail call, Mark. Bass and Buds, I will drop a link for the big O connection page down in the video descriptions. And Mark, I hope to see you hopefully in person real soon. Before we get on to the next piece of mail, I do want to introduce hopefully a new weekly section here on the channel. There was a great comment in a recent video saying that we should do a Bass and Bud of the Week. Somebody out there who is doing it right and fishing it old school. That got me thinking that that is 100% a thing that we can do on the channel. So if you're ever out there fishing it old school with vintage rods, reels, lures, or equipment, or retro bass and gear, definitely tag me on Instagram and also do a hashtag fish it old school. So to start things off, we've got Bass and Bud Dave over at Stump Jack Outdoors on Instagram. He is our Bass and Bud of the week and has been sending me some pretty cool photos of himself out there fishing an old school, catching some really nice looks like pike on lures like a head and sonic and even a head and big bud, which is really cool. And by the way, if you're looking for some fun Instagram content, he is definitely worth a follow as well. So Bass and Buds, uh, hopefully in the coming weeks, I get some submissions. And if we get enough, I will start featuring the Bass and Bud of the week right here. All right, next package comes to us from Matthew in Bryan, Texas. And it says, enjoy from Clint. So, <laughs> must be uh, his handle on the old channel. So, thank you, Clint. Brian, Texas. I think that is outside of Houston, if I recall. Still kind of working on my old Texas geography. Oh, <laughs> hot potato. I hear some packaging and I hear a rattling as well. What could we have 
<laughs> oh, wow. Oh, this is a man's extravaganza. Ooh, I should coin that. <laughs> um, there's a couple things. What am I going to start with? Well, I'll start with what I know. And he and I, I think we're talking on, it was either Facebook or Instagram, it's been a minute at this point, about some old baits that he had and was willing to donate to the old retro calls. These are a really cool, pretty rare bait from Man's. The old Hank worm. It's, I think this might have, this worm style might have come out later when they did the old Hard Nose series, but I just love the old box packaging. Nice largemouth bass on the back. And there is one of my favorite show hosts of all time, Mr. Hank Parker, sponsoring the old bait. What does it say here? This is simply the perfect plastic worm. Uh, says TV fishing show host Hank Parker and Bassmaster Classic winner as well. And it also comes with three free Eagle Claw fish hooks and it's made with FS protein. Huh, probably some sort of attractant. That's a good looking package. And what else do we have here? In addition to Hank's worm, we also have Hank's lizard. Ooh. That's actually a very simple looking lizard, but I kind of, kind of like it. And that looks like a sort of a red with a shoe's tail, huh? Very nice. And one more of the old Hank worm. Ooh, so now that I've got two of them, I can actually rip open one and do a little retro worming. Oh, this is a nice, long, discontinued top water from Mans, the Chug and Spit, even though it sounds a whole lot like a loudmouth. That's a good looking bait. Is this package uh, open? Ooh, the package is open-ish, so let's take a look at this thing. This is a rather sizable popper. Wow, a really nice concave lip. I had no idea how deep the mouth on that was. And a very interesting feature, I don't know if you can see air right there, but look at that. It's got a hole in the head. That's really cool. And I guess that's the chug and spit. So even though this might do more of a bloop, I guess because of that hole, you've got a release point for the water and you definitely probably get some spitting out of the back of the head. I know that this was in the package, but this is definitely going to have to go in the old top water tackle box. Oh man. <laughs> That's a good looking bait. Let's listen to that. Yeah, buddy. I just love the old designs of the man's bait. I don't care if it's a top water like this, a piggyback, or even a Leroy Brown. There is just something so Tom Man about this design. And last, there is a topwater from Renegade, and this is in a clamshell. We'll look at the package first. It says new. I don't think it's new anymore. <laughs> Can we open this thing without destroying the package? I hope so. Ah, there we go. And this says, it is a Renegade handcrafted hardwood lure made in the U.S. of A. And that is a really nice hardwood lure. Almost looks like a uh, Fred Arbogast Fred's Foe a little bit. Nice looking top water. Clearly a head and Zara Spook style. A Zara Spook almost keeps its width all the way till the tail and then tapers. But this one, you notice it almost starts to taper about mid bait. I uh, wonder what that would do for the action. Probably really make it slash in the water nicely. And I'm right there, I also spy a little BB weight of some sort. Um, man, I imagine this thing has a smoking side-to-side walk-the-dog action. Well, Clint, thanks again for the mail call. I will 100% be getting some of these baits wet in the near future. Just so long as the Texas weather forecast gets like maybe a little bit below 102. I mean, does it have to be 102? It's actually 106 today. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these lures in my top water tackle box, but if you guys are looking for some more old school content, click right here. 
Otherwise, I'll see you next Saturday. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.